Good evening. I'm Candace Fowler. I'm one of the pastors here at First Church, and it is a joy to be with you this evening in worship as we are in our last week of the series, um, Believe. And tomorrow we will wrap it up fully as we come together to celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ with um, our Christmas Eve services. There are five services 10 a.m. at Thompson, there's 5, 7, and 9 here, and 11 o'clock back at Thompson. So we hope that you'll plan on being with us at one of those services tomorrow. And I want to give a shout out to a member here at First Church because they contacted me this week and said, Candace, I have a sweatshirt that I think you need for this series. And would you look at this? Isn't it perfect? Very generous people here. I thought that was very thoughtful. So a uh, question for you all. How many of you are list makers? Like you like to keep on track, list makers. And so in the middle of this kind of crazy season, in order to keep things in check, you've got lists going. So I start off with a list of like the things that my children want or my family wants for Christmas. And then it gets a check mark if I order it. And then it gets the word done beside it once it's wrapped and under the tree. And then it gets a check mark on it to make sure everything is done. So I like work off this list all year long. And I never delete the list. It's in my phone. And even the other day, one of my kids said, I don't know, did, I'm not sure what I got last year for Christmas. I thought, well, first of all, that deserves a lump of coal this year. Um, but uh, I could go back to last year's. But my list, it's like I need to do this and, I need to do this and, I need to do this and. It's what keeps me organized throughout this season. And so we're going to talk tonight about a little bit about the and, why that's important as we understand the peace of God. So would you join me as we pray and before we look at the passage of scripture this evening? Most holy God, um, we are thankful for your presence here, for the promise of your word and who you say you are, that you are God, Emmanuel, and you are God with us. So thank you, Lord. So tonight, Lord, as we study this, these scriptures, would you teach us more about you? Would you um, Teach our hearts, and Lord, would my words and my um, thoughts bring glory and honor to you in this day. In the strong name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Well, last week we looked at Mary's story, and we're going to look tonight at Joseph's story. Um, his story is in Matthew, and it's in the first chapter of Matthew. It starts in verse 18. If you have your Bibles, I would encourage you to follow along. It says, Now, the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Now her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife. For the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit, and she will bear a son. And you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. And all this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God is with us. And when Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took care as his wife but and had no marital relations with her until she had, he had born a son, and he named him Jesus. And this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So now we won't really know how long it was between the time that Mary got the news and Joseph got the news. Now we see here that Joseph was given this news and immediately he went to um, be, talk to Mary. And so we knew that he already knew about this because he was planning to uh, silently end the relationship to try not to bring this, you know, uh, a lack of respect to her family, to her, um, that family could be considered outcast because of uh, Mary being pregnant outside of wedlock in a, in a traditional situation. This is obviously not very traditional. But can you imagine... When Joseph first heard this news from Mary, can you imagine how shocking it would have been? And then for just a minute, think about Mary saying, 
Joseph, I'm pregnant, but don't worry, it's God's. <laughs> I, that would have been an interesting conversation. I, we don't hear that part in Scripture, but it would have been a little interesting to, to see how that went down. But there's, it feels like, perhaps, like before Joseph would have known this whole information, so he would have been privy to this information, he probably would have felt abandonment, uh, betrayal, um, persecuted, and uh, maybe he would have like felt ghosted, you know, just like he was out of the loop of things. And so this is a very interesting situation, and we can say it's all about Bible times, but friends, like, it doesn't take long for news something like this to hit us, and minutes can feel like hours, right? Big news like this makes a big difference in our lives. Now, we're still talking about Mary and Joseph, and some of you may be already thinking about your own situations, situations that have caused you this kind of shock or betrayal or hurt or chaos in your life, and this disorder or this term that they use in the mental health field called flooded, where the thoughts are just coming at you so quickly you cannot think straight. Like the other morning, I was... I was on my bank app to see if a mobile deposit had gone through, and I realized there were some charges on there that weren't mine, and I'm calling the fraud line at 4.30 in the morning, and they're asking me for my uh, account number, and I'm giving them my telephone number because I'm flooded. I can't think because I realize someone has been using our debit card. And so in the middle of these things, we're wondering, like, how do we get past this? How do we get our feet on the ground again Maybe you're angry. Maybe you're angry at God. Maybe some of you still are for things that have happened in your life. So how do we get past this? Now, it's human nature for us to try to figure out a way to kind of get our feet on the ground, to avoid discomfort. We don't like to be uncomfortable. And so we will find ways, absolutely will find ways to avoid pain, and discomfort. That's just who we are. And there's a lot of sources out there. We can shop. We could drink. We can smoke. We can do drugs. We can get caught up in Netflix or pornography. We can get caught up in um, extramarital affairs. We can get caught up in just spending time with people but that aren't the people that are most important to our lives or that find us the most important in their lives. You know, there's a lot of things that we do and we can turn to to seek and find peace. But these only bring relief. It doesn't really bring us peace. It just brings an interruption from the thoughts that we currently have because those things will come back around and we're going to have to reconcile our differences with those things. So like if it's spending that you've been doing, you get that credit card bill and you immediately are like me at 4.30 in the morning. I got to call somebody because somebody's been using my card. And then you're like, oh, that was me. <laughs> that was me. <laughs> and that was me. <laughs> and that was me. Please, nope, that one was me too. The spending comes back around, and substance abuse is going to catch up with us, friends. We always have to answer for that with our bodies, our souls, our minds. It's a physical attack on our bodies. Streaming, whatever you're watching, it's just filler. It doesn't bring us peace. It robs us of time. And honestly, once you watch movies for so long, you don't even have a plot that you're really following. And let's face it, if you watch enough Netflix, you're finally to where you're having to read some subtitles because you can't find anything in English anymore. There's a way I know that. <laughs> and then the people. If you start seeking people that you have not made a covenant with in marriage, friends, there's, it's going to be hurting people, yourself and relationships. But we're going to look for things to keep us from the pain that we are in and the chaos that we're experiencing. We always want to find a way out. And so I'd ask you tonight, if you are in some of those categories I mentioned tonight, how are those distractions working for you? We've had times, all of us, when we look to false guides for peace. 
looking for a false guide for peace. And it's only Christ who offers a peace that is lasting. It's promised. Long before Jesus was born, it was promised to us that Jesus would be the Prince of Peace. We've seen it and we've read it every week of this Advent season from Isaiah 9, 6. For unto us a child would be born in a manger. Unto us a son would be given on the cross. And the government would rest upon his shoulders. And what would he be called? Read it with me, church. Wonderful Counselor, a Mighty God, an Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. And friends, I need to tell you for some clarity that peace is not the absence of fear, but it's recognizing God's presence in the midst of it. And Christ does not always provide for us a way to get out of difficulty and pain But God is always there to see us through it. And here's the truth. We are going to experience pain in this world. And you really have two choices. Are you going to deal with that pain with Jesus or without? Because you're going to have the pain either way. And Christ offers us something better than the world can give. These are Jesus' words. It says, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. So do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Do you notice that when we're always talking about the peace, God's always saying don't be afraid. Don't be afraid of the situation you're in. Don't be afraid of the future. My peace is here. And with God, we can find a purpose in the midst of our chaos. So listen closely. God does not bring the chaos. God brings peace. And there's no darkness in God. And this is scriptural. This is truth. This is 1 John 1, 5. This is the message that we have heard from Jesus and declare to you that God is light and there is no darkness at all in God. We are often bump into the bad uh, choices of others and ourselves in this world, but God is not up there just throwing out bad things at you because there's only goodness in God. There's only light in God. And God is not the reason for our chaos, but God is the redemption in the midst of it. And friends, here's the truth. Jesus did absolutely everything right. Jesus was a sinless Fully human and fully God, and Jesus was still killed and put on a cross. And Jesus had no faults. And Jesus still had to deal with pain. And in the midst of difficult situations, oftentimes when I don't know what to pray, I will just say this to God, Lord, how can I be more like you in the midst of this difficult situation? Because that's sometimes all I know to pray. And in the middle of our chaos, we sometimes don't know what we're going to do here. And we seek peace from all of the wrong places because, to be truthful, our hearts were never settled in God's care to begin with. And even though you may not exactly know what you're called to do, you can lean on God and lean into God-honoring ways. As Proverbs 3 says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all of your ways, submit to God and God will make your path straight. Friends, it's not only the Christian world that recognizes this. Country music songs, if you're old enough, they sing about it. Looking for love in all the wrong places. I mean, like... It's human nature. We go the places that we don't need to be going to to find relief or comfort or de-stress or find a relief in the midst of our chaos. But when you're going through a difficult time, we often can't think straight. Remember, we're flooded. The thoughts in our brains are coming at us too quickly that we can't settle down and think clearly. We're confused. There's chaos. And there's not time to think. And so we just start doing we start acting without thinking we start spending an excess of money the money that we don't have we start seeking attention from someone who we're not married to we start looking for opportunities to be away from the pain whether that's at your job or your family and you look for ways to not be with the people who love you most 
But if we stay on a God-honoring path, we can hear God's voice more clearly. Because God gives peace. So we must stay in fellowship, stay in church with one another where we can be encouraged, buy a book like this that you can be accountable to each day to read and be encouraged from scripture and prayer, keep reading your Bible or maybe start reading your Bible, stay in places because here's the deal. We may not always know what to do, but friends, most of the time we know what not to do. And when we stay in the places where we know that we can hear from God, we are more likely to find the peace that goes beyond our understanding. And you know what? We'll be shaped by those difficult times, and we'll either be shaped intentionally or non-intentionally, but we are going to be formed by those times. So the question is, you can either have the pain of discipline or the pain of regret. But when we have the pain of discipline, we will find our peace with God. And when we walk with God, we find that we are walking in God's peace and while you're searching for your way, your way, I'm telling you what, people are watching how you handle things. They're going to be encouraged by the fact that you stay close and listen for God's heart. And if you have children, little or big, they're going to be watching. And this, I found this meme this week. It says, imagine our children saying, we knew God because we saw God's love in our parents and that equipped us to live a fearless life. Your children are watching. Now, I read a story the other day. I love Time, time Hop on Facebook. I love it because it po pops up things about my children that I've shared with the, the world, the, the internet world. And so I started, like, I can't I believe it's been this many years, but I started on Facebook when 10, 12 years ago, and so my children were quite a bit younger. They were like 13, 10, 7, 5, and 4. And uh, I was usually posting that I was looking for a babysitter. That's what I was like about every other day. I'm looking for a sitter. Please, somebody come babysit my children. But this post popped up on Facebook because it was Christmas time. Here it is. To Santa and reindeer Thank you for the presents and put my brother Coleman on the naughty list. And tell the rain that the carrots are for them and the rest is for you. To Santa from Chapman. Naughty, N-O-T-Y. He's cute. We're glad about that. Not a good speller. The next year, I saw that I had put on there that Chapman said, I'm going to ask Santa for a nicer brother. And I was thinking, friends, I don't have time to shape that boy into place. So you just better be happy with your presence because it's too much work to make him any better. But you know what? Here's the deal. And no matter what the age, we don't like discord in our life. We don't like conflict with people. And even though we have it, and it might seem like we want to fight with somebody... The fact is we don't like how uncomfortable we are within us because people that aren't at peace start things that aren't peaceful. And if there's anything that steals our peace, it's when we have conflict with someone else. And when we lean on our own understanding instead of seeking God's hearts and God's, God's ways, things become harder. But when we seek God's heart and we seek God's way, God may call us to offer forgiveness to someone. Or God may call us to accept the forgiveness of someone. Broken relationships are terribly um, painful. And that's why peace is so very important. Now the Hebrew word for peace is shalom. And this root word of shalom has a meaning that is lost on us in Western, the Western world. The ancient Hebrew meaning for shalom is to make something whole. 
to take broken pieces and to make it whole. So it's not just this practical restoration of things that are like lost or stolen, but it's an overall sense of fullness and completeness of body, soul, mind, and strength. And this is an issue of the heart, this shalom, this peace. Because it's an inward sense of completeness, and it's not this absence of war, but it's truly a completeness, a feeling of tranquility that reigns inside of us. And so something that we don't do very often anymore in our churches, we replace it with turn and greet someone this morning. But what that started truly as was passing the peace. It was turning to someone and saying, peace with, to be with you, peace with you. And it was done typically before you went to a time of communion so that you could be right with your brothers and sisters in Christ. So there was no conflict there. So you shared peace, and when you shared the peace, you were saying, I want it to be well between us. I want you to be well within. I want there to be peace within us. I don't want strife or chaos in my life, and I don't want it for you either. And God's promises are true. And God's promises of peace are true. And we can know this peace between each other because of the promises of God. For 2 Corinthians 2, 120 tells us this. They know how many promises God have made. They are yes because of Jesus. And through Jesus, the amen is spoken to the glory of God and so that promise that we've been reading all through the Advent season in Isaiah 9, 6, that promise that Jesus would be that prince of peace for us, we see it in the life of Jesus Christ and in his earthly ministry. And so when we look at Jesus, when he went first to meet his disciples, after he had been crucified on the cross and resurrected, and don't you know those disciples were flooded they couldn't think straight because this is Jesus, their friend, their savior, their teacher, and he's been killed and they can't quite understand. They can't, they're not looking for him to be alive because they didn't really understand that he would come back to life. But yet when he saw them, he said to them, peace to you. Jesus, this prince of peace, is saying, I want everything within you to be made whole. Peace to you. Now, I want to share a story with you tonight. This past spring, I met Tammy Lucini, and I know she's over here somewhere, but it's dark and I can't quite see as well, but she's here tonight. And I asked her if she, I could share her story with you. And this is her family. Uh, we met this past spring because her husband Clarence had died unexpectedly. He had suffered a short illness and a sudden death. Um, Tammy and Clarence had been married 30 years. There they are with their boys, Karsten and Braxton. The bottom picture was at the last um, family picture they had just days before Clarence died. That was where uh, Karsten was graduating from medical school. It was a tremendous shock for her and her boys. So since May, I've been watching Tammy and travel this journey of grief. And she and I sat down this week and... I talked to her about where she finds her peace. And this is what she had to share. She says, it's been a hard year. I was surrounded by family. She said, we'd all been together for Carson's gradua graduation when Clarence got sick. And then when he died, I was immediately surrounded by family and friends again. And I relied on my family a lot. She says, it's not something that you ever want to have to ask your family to do or for that situation. You know, she said, some days I made myself get up. One day I was literally on the floor, and I heard this voice say, get up off the floor and keep going forward. The ability to go on was beyond my understanding. She said, I was mad for a while. I asked God why a lot, but it is God who gets you going, and it's just one thing at a time. She said, I didn't want to come to church alone, but I did. 
She said, my sons came with me for a few times, and after a few times, I realized I could do it. Because She said, it's scary coming to church by yourself. She said, now I look for others sitting alone so I can sit with them. Clarence was my friend. We were each other's friends. So when I was gone, I had to find a new purpose. So I signed up for a life group. Looking for a sense of purpose, I joined a group that was serving at the community cafe. I knew my friends didn't really know what to say, and that's okay, because who knows what to say? My boys and I are just doing our best. We just keep trying to do our best. She said, I've signed up for the mission trip. In January, I'm going to go to Puerto Rico to help others. I signed up to sponsor a child with world vision and looking for other ways to find purpose. And recently, I helped a family. It's something I had never done, but I heard this voice, likely God saying, do this, just like I had heard it several times before, get up. You have to get up. And as we continued talking, she added this. Hey, I'm not perfect. I don't have the answers. I'm just trying to find my way, and I often hear God tell me to do things that other people might think I was cuckoo to be doing. But I do it. I'm a sinner. I'm not holier than thou. I'm just trying to find my purpose and finding peace in God. Thank you, Tammy, for sharing your story. Friends, as the more we draw closer to Christ, the more we will find this peace that we often find so elusive. And there's an and in this. Just like as I shared at the beginning, there's an and like I've got, it's a crazy busy time of Christmas, but I've got five different lists. I've got to do this and this and this and. But in the midst of the chaos, I find peace. And that's the promise of Jesus Christ in Philippians 4, 6, and 7. Do not be anxious about anything, but with prayer and petition, present your request to God. And the peace of God that goes beyond our understanding will guard your hearts, the things that you feel. And God's peace will guard your mind when it goes crazy and it just wants to keep thinking and it's on overload and over time. But our hearts and minds will be guarded with God's peace because of Christ Jesus and what Jesus did for us that we celebrate and recognize in this Advent season. There's always an and with Jesus. It doesn't have to be chaos or peace. There can be disruption in your life and you can still have peace that there is hope for tomorrow because of jesus there's always an and and you know we take the s advent time to focus on christ's coming as a baby in a manger and to prepare our hearts for the second coming of jesus christ but i have to ask you this Jesus came to this earth and people missed it. They missed knowing that the Son of God was walking this earth. The disciples missed the fact that Jesus was going to come back to life, although Jesus told them several times this was going to happen, and they missed it. So friends, I can't help but wonder if we miss God's peace because we aren't looking for it. What can we be doing each day with intentionality to make sure that we do not miss God's peace? My prayer is that it will be a journeying together so we can encourage each other along the way so that we can remember, as the words of Isaiah 9, 6 say, that Jesus is our Prince of Peace and that we will search for God's peace in the midst of our chaos and know that we can find peace. So tonight, we sent you home, we'll be sending you home with that verse from Philippians 4, 6, and 7. There's always an and with Jesus. There's always an and with Jesus. So tonight, we're going to close in prayer with this song playing. The words will be on the screen. If, uh, If you can use prayer tonight, we would be honored to pray with you as the song plays. We invite you to come now, but let me pray with you first. 
Most holy God, our God of peace, we thank you for your care. We thank you for your and, that we bring our anxiety to you and we find peace. Lord, teach our hearts to seek you for peace because your word says that we should ask for it. So Lord, help us to ask, help us to look for it. And Lord, may we share this peace with the world around us. In the powerful name of Jesus we pray, amen.